Hi, I built a, uh, a small diorama for a modeling contest for my model railroad club and the theme was uh, winter so uh, having never done a winter scene before I uh, watched some YouTube videos and uh, learned a little bit about it, got the proper materials and now I'm going to show you how I created uh, uh, this winter diorama. Uh, I have uh, another video that includes step-by-step -step, uh, instructions for absolutely everything, but this video uh, I'm going to kind of gloss over the uh, uh, riverbed and the rock face because uh, uh, that's the same as uh, uh, any particular uh, uh, diorama might be. Uh, I want this one to concentrate on the uh, uh, winter effects. Uh, but I did uh, uh, choose uh, uh, my size of my diorama and that I wanted a pond because I had a set of ice skaters uh, with the river and uh, I wanted some uh, uh, different layers in it. Uh, I created this effect by uh, gluing two pieces of one inch uh, insulating foam together. I cut the river and the uh, pond out uh, of the top layer before putting it down. Uh, I then shaved off the pond level area because I didn't want that as deep as that canyon where the river comes in. And uh, then uh, over here in this side, uh, I, uh, the chunk I cut out here, I placed up here. This gave me several levels uh, to work with. Uh, uh, I then covered everything with uh, uh, Glidden's uh, Gripper White Primer and Sealer. As a matter of fact, I also use this to glue the foam together. It's a wonderful foam glue. You should, should buy it just for that. Uh, but uh, this, this not only seals the river base and the pond base for uh, laying the realistic water later, but it also gives me a white base to work with. Uh, I used uh, a painter's uh, uh, trowel to uh, uh, apply uh, joint compound in the areas where I wanted my rock face. I laid it on nice and thick. It took uh, about three days for it to dry 100% all the way through so that I could carve it. And uh, I carved using uh, horizontal and uh, vertical uh, cuts uh, and uh, continued until I got my rock face looking the way I want. Here it is down in the canyon and once you have that I use Woodland Scenic's uh, earth colors to paint it using yellow ochre, burnt umber, and stone gray with an overcoat wash of uh, black. Uh, I use Woodland Scenic's spotting technique uh, but uh, I use the yellow ochre and the burnt umber uh, undiluted uh, right onto the uh, uh, joint compound and then uh, I diluted the uh, gray stone uh, two to one water uh, to paint and did a wash over and this uh, mixed the colors together. As you notice I did a section at a time because I didn't want the under paint to dry before I got to the overcoats and on top of that a wash of about uh, 20 to one of uh, water to black and this filled in crevices and made several uh, highlights uh, in my cuts. Uh, then uh, I did the uh, shoreline uh, using gray and here I have green. I think I ended up settling uh, on using yellow ochre and gray, make it more like the rock area. Uh, then I used a dark phthalo blue to, uh, to uh, uh, show the dark, uh, show the deep water here and use progressively lighter shades of blue uh, as I got to the shallower waters. Uh, then uh, after the pond I finished the riverbed and now I'm ready to lay my talus. Uh, this is Woodland Scenics. All of this came in one pack. Uh, those boulders up front are way too big for, the end, for my end scale layout. Uh, but I did use the finer gravel and you can see uh, up at top there uh, I have some uh, uh, I did find some smaller pieces that worked well for my uh, end scale layout. Uh, so I glued them down using uh, Crafter's Pick uh, glue. It's a water-based glue. It's very thick, very sticky, and it dries clear. It also dries flexible. Uh, so once I had uh, all of the talus down and ready to pour Woodland Scenic's uh, realistic water, uh, I needed four pours uh, to uh, fill up the uh, first quarter inch 
of the pond and that left me uh, 1 16th of an inch left for my top layer of uh, uh, where uh, I will start my uh, uh, ice effect. I've uh, put four layers of the Woodland Scenics uh, Realistic Water in and I'm up a quarter of an inch, still have a ways to go. I didn't get any cracks, I just have a few smudges over here. I doubt you can see where my grandchildren wanted to see if I was telling the truth when I said it hadn't dried yet. Uh, but everything's dry now. And uh, the uh, method for making the top layer with the uh, uh, ice is uh, one that I learned from a Woodland Scenics uh, video on YouTube. Uh, I've never used it before. Uh, so I did a little experimenting. Uh, what I did was I took some white pigment. This is my acrylic, uh, uh, artist acrylic, and I put a little dab in this jar and then filled it, the jar about half full. I guess I'm, what, 20 to 1 water to uh, uh, paint. And uh, uh, that is what I'm going to use uh, to make the... Uh, uh, ice. Now what you can see here, this was my first experiment with it. Um, I wanted it foggy like this, not dark like that. So uh, I, uh, uh, so this mixture was obviously, uh, uh, the, the pigment was uh, too heavy. Uh, I didn't have it thinned enough. Uh, you may want to experiment yourself uh, uh, before you uh, find the proper mixture because again, I don't, I don't measure anything. I just do about. So this is a very thin amount. So, what I'm going to do is pour my last layer of the Woodland Scenics Realistic Water. Okay, I can put in more if I need to. But here's where I need to be careful because I'm getting near the top. Okay, we'll pull all this over. Now, one of the things that I noticed about uh, ponds and lakes is that uh, near the shore where it's shallower, the ice is thicker and foggier. Uh, over in this section that, that I've designated as a deep part, the ice is thinner and clearer. So I want to keep the pigment away from this area. Uh, let me see, I'm a little out of balance here, so I'm going to prop this up just a little. Okay. And I think I need a little more. For this last area, because I want it to come up very close to my shoreline. Now, it doesn't have to come up right to it, because I'm going to have little snowdrifts coming over it. Um, Sure, I'm not overspilling on the back. Okay, how am I doing here? Okay, I think that looks good. So, it looks like I still have a little hole right there, and I'm not all the way up to the edge over here, so let's put just a little more in right here. I don't know if this is showing up on the camera or not. Ah. Uh, Okay, uh, I'm going to use, uh, it's hard to spill out of, to, to drip it out of this, so I'm going to use this, and I'm just going to drip this in like this, and I'll, I don't know if I'm going to need more, or I guess I'll use the end of this paintbrush, and we'll just swirl it in. Looks like I could use some more. Right up on the edge. I'm uh, happy with my fogginess. It looks like I've got about the right mixture. Maybe 
be just a little more, a little closer, and I think I'll some through here and down my river. trying to do is keep any spot where the I, I want the pigment to actually mix with the uh, realistic water. So that it thins even more. So that all I get is a fogginess. And not and not white. I want people to be able to see through this ice. As you can see, it's a little little bit too white there. So I'll just scoot through it and bring it around. Okay, uh, but I want the swirls in it. Uh, and again, as you can see, I, le I left it out over here where it's deepest. Now oh, let's let's put this in around. Because that's still a little too white there. But you see, it's okay to have swirls in it. All right, and we will let that dry for 24 hours, and uh, I'll get back to you. So it's been 24 hours since doing the top layer, and uh, I'm liking the way it looks. So, now that we've completed our ice, it's uh, time to start working on other details and putting in our snow. Okay. Um, I have this uh, little cabin I cobbled together out of uh, leftovers from old kits. And uh, I'm going to fix it up so that it's uh, been in a snowstorm. And uh, for using the drift on the roof, I'm going to use uh, white caulk. It's $2.50 for this at the Home Depot. That's rather cheap. So we'll just squeeze some of that in here so I can get at it with my knives. Yeah. Oh, that's probably enough. And we'll take our knife and put it on and try to drift it over the E just a little bit. Now we're going to be making icicles too, but uh, this is all you do. Like you were frosting a cake. Really. Now, I don't want that down there because that dries white and if I'm going to have an icicle it needs to dry clear. Um, this top part after the uh, caulk dries, see so kind of layer it back up to see the swirl as it comes back up. And make sure you get all of the roof covered. We won't need to put, I'll put some snow up here later. Right now we're just doing the huge accumulation on the roof. And I will continue to do both sides of this and get back to you when it's dry. Uh, while I'm waiting for the snow on my cabin to dry, let's do a tree. Um, I have my uh, Glidden Gripper sealer that uh, I used in the beginning. And uh, I will use that, the regular paintbrush. Uh, make sure your paintbrush is dry when you dip it in here because you don't want to dilute it any. But just go ahead and 
glob it on in the forks. Anywhere you see a fork, glob in some of the sealant. Like that. Wherever there's a fork. And uh, it's only necessary, if the fork is parallel to the ground, it's only necessary to put it on one side. The snow won't stick on the other, but if it's, if the fork is vertical, is uh, not parallel with the ground, then you might want to put it on both sides. And uh, here on both sides. And then when I get finished with this, this of course also is a glue. Remember, I use it to glue my foam together. <laughs> So, to add a little texture to this smooth paint, because that's what it is, paint, to add some texture to it, I will use some of Woodland Scenic's uh, Soft Flake Snow. The same thing I'm going to use to cover the ground and give texture to it when we get ready to do our finishing touches. But uh, I have uh, several of these trees that uh, I made for this particular diorama. Uh, I have a clinic on making uh, N-scale trees and uh, it shows making this tree, I believe. <laughs> and of course, uh, you can make them any size you want. But as I get all these forks done, and I'm just about done now, I'll uh, get down here in the base where there'll be a little more and a little out here along the roots like that set that aside and here is the uh, snowflake and uh, for this purpose I'll just snow it down on top of this white and it will cling to the paint and give it some texture. And uh, that's how I'm going to do the trees. Now uh, I will complete the ground the tree goes on before I plant the trees. But I have to plant my cabin before I do the ground. So uh, 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 I will complete my trees here and by the time I finish that the, the cabin should be dry enough and uh, uh, we will coat it with the uh, snowflake. All right, this is a truck that's going to be buried in the snow, so I've piled some uh, uh, white caulk on it, and it's dry. Uh, now I want to put uh, some snow on it, and to make the snow adhere, I'll just take some plain old white glue. Looks like my cap is clogged. Okay. Take some plain old white glue, full strength, and my paintbrush. And I will just dab it on all over. Let it kind of careen over the sides a little bit just let some of it slip over the sides like that. You know, it gets a little more on the hood. Because I sort of want the sides to be a little open so people know what was there. <laughs> and of course up on the fenders here. Top of the wheels. Like that. And then, once I have an adhesive surface, we'll just snow on it, like this, and 
me shake that off a little. Like that. And we'll put a little coat on top. I have some, uh, uh, let me put some in an eyedropper. I have better control. I keep this eyedropper for using small amounts. This is two to one glue, two parts water to uh, one part white glue. And you seal it in with that. And as a matter of fact, after I put this in, put this on, we'll just thicken it up a little. Like that. Okay? Now, what I will do is when I'm ready to place it on my diorama, I'll leave it in place and uh, I will put more of this glue on top of it, snow it in until it's covered up and only parts of it will be showed. Will be, be showed. Uh, another vehicle I'm going to have is this pickup truck. Now this one isn't covered in snow because this one's been on the road. It's what brought the ice skaters out there. So I've done this exactly the same way I did the trees. Uh, I painted it with uh, my uh, white sealant and then I snowed on top of it. And if I want more, I can put a little of this glue on the top of it and snow on it some more. But I think if it's been on the road, this will be good. I, I might put a little around the... We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens when we get there, but I got the major part of this done. So, uh, uh, now uh, my uh, roof should be dry and uh, we will treat it the same way we treated this. So here are my snowed in vehicles. Uh, I have them on my layout or the diorama while I'm waiting for my uh, third coat of uh, uh, realistic water to dry, but uh, I believe that came out fairly well. And now we'll get to the cabin. So my caulk is dry on my cabin. And uh, we'll go ahead and cover the side with white glue, full strength. I want to get it over the edges coming around so we won't, so they won't be quite so straight. Flopped over the edge there like that and we'll be attaching icicles under it. That will be the next step. I'll show you a simple way to do icicles. It's a little easier in end scale because you don't do each individual one, you can't <laughs> kind of glob them all together because they're so small. But uh, again, I want this glue globbed on there. I want it big. I want the glue to soak into the, to the uh, snowflake that's around it. And put a little on the edge here like that. Covered up there, white on white. Yeah, I think I've got it all there. So we'll do this side and then do the other. Um, so once the glue is on, just snow on it. Like that. And we have our snow. You can add layers to it as you need. So we'll do the other side and that will be ready to place uh, on our diorama. There are several products you can use to make icicles. Uh, Woodland Scenic's water effect uh, works very well. Uh, clear caulk from the uh, uh, clear silicone caulk from the hardware store works. Uh, although I don't think it dries clear enough to suit me, the uh, water effects does, but it's a really expensive. Uh, I use craft, Crafter's Pick Glue, and uh, it's a very simple process. If you're making icicles in HO or N scale, uh, HO or O scales, you just run it out like that. And 
pull it to a point. And that will dry completely clear. But uh, that's a pretty big icicle. So uh, I'm just going to make a line like this. The slower you move, the thicker the line. The faster you move, the thinner the line. And then, uh, since I'm going to be doing the front E's of the house, I want to put them at an angle. So I'm just going to kind of pull out my icicles like this. See? Now, uh, when, when these dry, they'll dry clear. Some the other way, and they'll just pull off this wax paper. I guess I didn't tell you about the wax paper, did I? So we'll pull them off the wax paper, and of course they'll have a flat side and a round side, and you'll want to put the round side facing out. But we'll just use a little more of this glue and glue our icicles, and of course on the side. It comes straight down, so you just pull it down like this. Because this is the only way I know of to make icicles small enough to be on an end scale uh, layout. Remember, 1 16th of an inch is 10 inches in end scale. So uh, that's how you do it. Uh, I have some that I did earlier. Uh, they adhere a little bit to the plastic, so don't pull it out and stretch them out and break them. Just we, we want, want to keep them. On up. But uh, now I'll cut these out that are hanging down like that and put them up on the side. Can't do it right now because my snow's not dry, but as soon as it's dry, we'll take a little of this glue and attach it, but you see it dries clear. And this is how I will make the icicles that I will apply all over uh, any vertical surface. You notice on a tree, you don't have anything very vertical, everything is going up and so the snow kind of falls down. So you don't usually have icicles on trees unless you've got a big branch that grows out. But then again, there's not a lot of snow on top of the branch because the branch isn't that big. Whereas on a roof, you've got a great big roof with a lot of snow up there so there'll be a lot of melt and you're going to have icicles. Especially since this cabin doesn't appear to have gutters. So that's the icicles, and then we will move on from there to the next step. I've uh, mounted my uh, cabin on my diorama, and you can see I've uh, attached the icicles. Uh, they look fairly good. I'm pleased with them. I have my outhouse in the back. Now I'm going to do this work on this upper area here, including the road coming down with footprints in the road from the cabin. I'm going to attach this uh, vehicle and have tracks leading in and we'll complete that half uh, before we install the trees up here. All right, for the snow, you've seen me put snow on uh, the roof, and uh, you've seen me put snow on these vehicles here. Uh, it's pretty much the same way. Uh, I have a brush. I've got a jar of, of uh, full-strength white glue, and uh, let's get it over closer, and I'll just start applying it. like this. Put it out over the rock face here like this and it can even be a little thick. And remember the uh, the glue will not stand up too much but the thicker you place it, the thicker you put it, the more snow will be there. Uh, I'll bring it up here and remember you can always add another layer on top just like I did uh, with those vehicles I showed you. But I'll bring it out to the edge there and while this glue is nice and thick 
I'll go ahead and set my vehicle down. I stopped right here, and the people got out and went over to skate. And uh, you may notice over here, uh, I thought it was a little steep for the people to get down to the ice over here, so I went ahead and cut myself a little Jacob's Ladder path in there to get down to it so it's not so steep for them. And remember, any place you get glue when you, uh, uh, you're you going to have snow. Uh, I'm going to take care of little lips and things like that and the rock face together. I'll do that all at one time, but for now I'm just going to continue painting until I get all of this area I'm working on covered. So now that we have the uh, glue down, I'll take my uh, soft flake snowflake, snow from uh, Woodland Scenics, and I will begin to snow everywhere. Now don't worry if it gets in a place that you haven't put glue, it'll fall off of there. Don't worry about it being too thick. The part that the glue doesn't get to will come off. I want to get a little, let's see, uh, I want some snow to be under the truck there, so let's uh, just blow it under <laughs> so that there's snow underneath the truck. And continue to place the snow. By the way, uh, I, I work on a glass top, and when uh, I get ready to uh, dump the uh, snow that's not glued, uh, I'll be able to brush it back in to the uh, jar and save it. It's all right if snow piles up along the side of the buildings. I may go and if there's not enough there, I'll go back and put some more there. But for right now, uh, this is all it takes. And I am going to, uh, before I dump it off, I'm going to let it sit for a while. But uh, one of the things that I need to do right away, now that I have the snow spread, I'm sure I have enough behind there, I can't really see, uh, is to make my footprints. I'm going to need a little path coming out of here. going around the back this will look different when I uh, dump the extra snow off but we're also going to have skaters coming down here and I'll see what this looks like and whether I have to do any more to it later to make it look right when I dump the extra snow off. Okay? And we'll have some like this one. Looks like I might need a little snow there. Here, let's take some of this extra and put it down there. Because all the glue that I put down, I do want to have snow on top of it. I don't want it to dry without snow on it. So, I'm going to finish the rest of this in the same manner and then we'll uh, get to the uh, river. Okay, change in plans. Uh, I didn't like what I had here when I dumped the snow off so when I worked on the other side here this is what I've decided. Again, I put the glue down the same way I showed you and I've uh, dumped all of the snow on. Uh, I'm going to uh, brush away the snow that's down on the ice. Uh, I'll decide later how I'm going to do snow on the ice, but uh, for right now I'm going to brush it away. I'll just brush it up onto the bank. And you see these nice drifts that I have along the bank here. You see how the snow has fallen down. 
and I'm going to put just a little more on the rock face here. Now you notice the vertical faces don't get it, but the uh, horizontal face, uh, horizontal faces of the rock do. And I'll just put that on like that. Again, let's go back. Uh, see, because my next step is going to uh, spill some glue onto the lake, and uh, so I'm not going to leave any snow there now. If I want, uh, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do about snow on the lake yet. Uh, so now I will take my two to one glue, put it in my eyedropper. This is the same glue I use for, oops, for ballasting. Uh, made a mess. It dries clear. Everything will be fine. It's just that I didn't want, now the glue is going to stick out there. Excuse me, the snow is going to stick. That's what I'll, I think one of the favorite things about my clinics is that I show you the mistakes. <laughs> As we learn together. Okay, now, using my two to one glue, I'm just going to drip it into the, uh, this two to one glue also has some uh, soap in it as an emulsifier keeps the beading down a little bit and we'll just once you get the glue in stay next to the wet spot and the glue will just spread instead of balling up okay and if we put it in like this uh, if you can see down here we've got a much nicer texture I will do this not only on the rock face, but all the way back. And that way I can keep these uh, nice little drifting effect of the snow. And uh, as you can see in here, the texture remains too. So this is what I will continue to do all over through here and I will again I'm going to snow on this area again and do the same thing instead of dumping the snow off I'm going to put the two to one glue on top of it and uh, I'll get back and show you how that turned out all right I uh, spread the glue uh, two to one glue over here some of it's running down again I just as soon keep it off the ice for now but now I'm going to snow on it again I'm going to snow on it heavily because this snow will soak up the glue and remain in place. But because it's going on unevenly, it will dry unevenly. Put it on thick. Now go a little bit lighter out here on the rock face because I sort of want the rock face to show through a little bit. Make sure I get it heavy on the hills. And I will let this dry and uh, come back and show you how it turned out. Right, my snow is uh, dried. As you can see, it stands up. Uh, the tracks I put in here stay. Everything stays. All of the nice texture that we have stays from the glue. But before it's set up, I planted my trees, just pushed them down into the snow. Uh, I discovered that all that work that I spent making the roots uh, uh, was a waste of time because I had to cut them off to get them in. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the, the next thing that I want to do is I want to put some ice on this uh, rock faces here. 
uh, we'll because as you see as the as the snow melts here it, it, it comes down here and then it drips and then when the uh, um, it gets colder in the evening it dries so I will just take uh, some of my crafters pick glue and put it on the end of a stick just stretch it out like that okay and this will dry clear and look like ice So, I will take care of that little detail in through here, and uh, then I'll put my ice skaters around. I think I'm going to find a log for the skaters to sit on while they change into their skates here. And uh, then we'll be complete, and I'll show you the finished product. All right, uh, these are the icicles that I showed you. Uh, I think they came out rather well. Uh, of course, you can always go back and thicken them by putting another layer of uh, the crafter's pick glue on them. Uh, here are some icicles that I uh, did in the uh, canyon part, and uh, I think all in all, I got a very good uh, overall diorama here. Uh, I learned a lot making this uh, clinic, and uh, I hope you all have learned something along with me.